Okay, uh, so this video is going to be covering how to create volume surfaces in Civil 3D. Um, and so the general idea with volume surfaces is just to get your cut and fill earthwork quantities um, in a much quicker, easier fashion um, than just using your cross sections or the volume tools um, within your cross sections and stuff like that. Um, you can <clears throat> effectively do the full calculation all at once. Um, the kind of big bugaboo with this is you have to have a complete finished grade surface compared to your existing um, surface to be able to completely compare. So if you're doing a, a roadway project that means you have to completely model the corridor um, and create a surface from that. Um, just this example here and a good example of why using the volume surfaces can be helpful um, compared to just doing cross sections. Um, so this is kind of an aerial view. This is a project, um, a subdivision project. It's got a lot of curves and swerves and makes doing generic cross sections uh, a lot more difficult. There's a lot more sticking out in, in different areas. And then also we wanted to do interior work, drainage work, um, throughout the site so that just made cross sections just really untenable for this project um, so this is just kind of the general idea I'll turn that off and so this is the existing ground um, contours just the one foot contours um, so we essentially broke up this project doing the volume surfaces kind of three separate areas um, and I'll show you so we have the updated drainage contours and I'm going to turn on the, the contours here for that um, so you can see we've kind of done a little bit of work on some of these ponds smoothing them out uh, we wanted to add a little detention area wetland area here um, before the the main cross drain outlet and then also a detention pond <clears throat> at the end before the final outlet off the site um, so let me click on that so you can kind of see that's the existing so let's do the this is highlighting the, the newer contours um, compared to the existing contours and so actually just a brief overview of how I created that surface um, initially I took the existing ground so this so we had a surface and then here it's just represented as contours um, but what I did is I went to extract from surface. So on your your toolbar up here, um, when it pops up, once you select your surface, it'll pop up, um, and then you can come to extract from surface, and you can extract solids from surface. And I'm not going to do it here, um, or not solids. I'm sorry. Extract objects. Okay. Um, and then you can pick your major and minor contours and here we just select all and essentially what that would do is now create polylines um, with the elevations but for the entire <coughs> surface so essentially what you're seeing here highlighted it'll create that as polyline features once you have those polylines you can go in <coughs> and just do grip edits and kind of move them how you want so you can see kind of in this detention area it's tied into the existing um, contours but then we've kind of grabbed them and, and scooted them out a little bit okay and once you do that then you can select all of those polylines and add them to a surface under your surface definition so if you created a new surface, just create surface, generic tin surface, and I think I have a video on this somewhere. Once you have that surface created and it's just an empty shell of a surface, you can come down to definition and click contours and you can just add and you just highlight all those contours you had and it'll add it to that surface. So essentially that's how I made this, this newer drainage contour surface, okay? So that would be the first big comparison we'd want to do. So there's a lot of earthwork, especially a lot of cut um, within these areas and outside of the main roadway <clears throat> that we're wanting to, to assess the volume for. Okay, so, 
And then we also will have our roadway, which I'll talk about <coughs> here shortly. Um, so just getting at the idea of volume surfaces. So essentially, it, it's pretty pretty basic that we want to take two surfaces. We have our finished grade surface here highlighted, and then we have our existing ground underneath it. And I want to compare those directly, basically all across the board, um, and just see how much cut and fill there, there's going to be. Okay. Now that, that would be pretty hard um, in a lot of instances doing it by hand or trying to have cross sections throughout here um, to be able to assess that. But in Civil 3D now, and I'm not sure which version it, it started with, but this is version, the 2024 version, but I know it, it has been around for a few years. Um, once we select that again, we go up to our, our ribbon and we can go to Volumes Dashboard. Okay. And this is kind of, it pops up within the panorama, so there will be, there could be other tabs here. Um, but what we want to do is right here, we create a new volume surface, okay? And it's actually going to physically create a surface, and but the elevations essentially of this surface will be feet above or below <coughs> our comparison surface, or our base surface, I mean. Um, and so essentially that's how much cut and fill, and that's how it computes cut and fill. Okay, so it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so we're just going to give this a name. And so this is for our new drainage contours. So I'll just put drainage, but then I always put kind of volume just to denote that this is a volume surface, which there's a little different icon, but just so you know there. Um, so our base surface is always going to be our existing ground or whatever you want to reference and compare it to. Here, that's what this tin um, surface. And then the comparison surface is going to be <coughs> our new drainage contours. So we want to keep our cut and fill factor at one um, because there's no scaling here. And we just hit OK. OK, now it has created a new surface in here. We can see our drainage volume. And you can see this is a different icon, which is we hover, it'll say it's a 10 volume surface. All right. Um, but the nice thing also is right here in the dashboard, it just immediately gives you your cut and fill in cubic yards, your net, and then it kind of has a little graph to show your cut and fill. So the fills and the green, you know, the reds cut. Um, so it just immediately pops up there, which is really nice. Um, and it was that easy to get all those quantities for this whole area. Okay, so that takes care of our essentially our whole interior. So this yellow that pops up, um, that's just the border of the um, because of the style here. Um, but we could do this. This is just contours we have, but you could set a different surface style, and that's cut and fill banding in one foot intervals, and it kind of shows you the differences um, within that. But that's kind of goofy to look at, so we'll turn that off. Um, so we've done the new drainage contours, so I'm going to turn that one off as well. So, and just looking at our roadway, um, I did create a corridor um, all the way around for all of that. Um, and then I used the datum surface from that corridor, which I'm going to turn these on as contours and triangles so you can see them a little bit better on top. So you see that's the east half. that for the west half okay um, so you can kind of see this is the the corridor and the boundary of that corridor of the roadways within this site so we have all these subdivision roads there's a couple parking lots etc um, one thing to note why there are two separate surfaces instead of just one for the entire corridor um, when you're creating the surface surfaces um, within a corridor and I don't have them linked here but essentially you create the corridor and then you can you go to the surfaces tab in corridor properties and you can create a top um, and datum surface 
and then you can go to boundaries and set the boundaries as the outer extent of the corridor which if you have a linear project or say like this section of road that works really good because there is a distinct outer edge and that's the entire corridor okay but when you have it where the whole corridor is kind of in a loop you kind of you need this donut effect you need this interior to be cut out but the exterior as it views it is only this outer edge right so it's actually trying to create the surface all the way across this interior which we don't want okay and so it doesn't recognize that um, so essentially what I did um, and I just turned on this layer so I created the tin boundary layer so you can extract a 2d poly or a 3d polyline which you can convert to 2d um, for this entire outside and then what I did was create another polyline just manually for the interior but then I split it up okay so you have one side here Let's see if I can actually highlight without getting all of that. All right, so that's one polyline. And then I created another polyline. And I split it just right down the line so it's even. Um, <clears throat> just kind of pick a good point to, to split it at. And then essentially I edited the full datum um, and then created a boundary within a new... Um, and so to create a new surface with the boundary of each side okay and so essentially now we have two um, two separate surfaces which represent our full corridor so if we want to get our cut and fill um, for these for the roadway corridors we do the same thing we can just select one of them and we can go to our volumes dashboard and we're just gonna add another volume surface so this will be the east datum and just a note you generally for your earthwork you want to use your datum surface and not your top surface because your top surface essentially is the top of the asphalt or top of curbs you know on top of the ground so whereas the datum depending on how deep your surface or your surface layers so your asphalt your aggregate things like that are you want you don't want that within your volume calculations you want to get rid of that so we use the datum surface um, so again our base surface is just going to be the the eg10 and then our comparison is going to be the datum east <clears throat> okay so we run that and you can see that adds it straight to our volume dashboard so we can get continue this whole thing um, and then we're just real quickly going to do it for the west side as well in just the exact same fashion so our base is our 10 comparison is now datum west okay and so now we have essentially got all of our earthwork quantities just in a few minutes here now obviously it takes a while to create the corridors and all the surfaces but once you have that done right here you've got all your cubic yards of cut cubic yards of fill and net and just put those together for the full quantity and that's essentially all there is to it for creating volume surfaces um, so that's it for today thanks